got an email. They said um, the frame's not gonna work. What do you mean it's not gonna work? We've spent the last eight months and over $25,000 designing our dream mini bike. This all started because my dad and I were tired of traditional mini bikes and the limitations that come with them. As we began our research, we found that most riders were frustrated by the many poorly built bikes on the market. So our mission was simple, design a premium mini bike that embodies passion beyond limits and make it accessible to everyone. But here's the issue. Since starting this company, I've burned through almost all of my savings. And so if we don't launch soon, then the future of Mantini Motors hangs in the balance and I might be forced to find a real job. And who knows when we'll ever be able to do this again. But here's the thing. We can't launch until we know how much we can sell our bikes for, but we won't know how much to sell them for until we build a working prototype. And we can't build a working prototype unless we find a machine shop with the experience and tools to do so. That's why for the last two months, I've been on the hunt non-stop trying to find the best machine shop to help us bring our dream to a reality. Unfortunately, none of them have responded yet and I'm getting kind of nervous. So if you could just give me a call back, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So while we wait for machine shop to respond, we're gonna actually use this 3D printer right here to build a full scale MBK1 to make sure the design actually works. So welcome to the official MBK1 vlog where we'll be documenting the entire process from prototype to pre-sale. So hit that subscribe button to follow along and to see whether or not we can do it or if I'll have to go back to a real job. Here we go, it's officially printing and that's gonna be either the upper or lower clamp that we're gonna use. What do you think? I don't know. I think it's gonna work out be perfect. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Hopefully. Oh yeah, I got, uh, I got faith in your, in your designs. <laughs> All right, so part of the prototyping process is figuring out and making sure that everything you've designed works properly. So it's a lot cheaper and more efficient to 3D print everything before you go to an actual machine shop and they build it for you. This is gonna print for the next like two and a half days and then we'll see how it is doing. All right, there we have it. It's not sanded yet, but there is the right side of the frame, which means that we can finally see what this is gonna look like together. like whole week assembling the entire MBK1 frame. Dad, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, what do you like most about it? That you could fit a big motor in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, so let's point out a couple of cool things. So obviously like this took a long time to plastic weld and put it all together, but this is finally what it looks like. We're really happy with it. What I really like are the engine slots going horizontally rather than vertically because now you can actually put any motor you want and easily shift them over. And another thing I like, no more worrying about the motor. Motor you put in one spot and use the back to tighten up the chain as tight as you want. So we got the front end right here. We got the upper clamp and the lower clamp. As you can see, we got the nice handlebar riser plates there. These are the handlebar sleeves. We got the handlebars themselves. And then we got our jack shaft right here. This is what the jack shaft will go into. We got another, we got a little bolt right here that is like a um, set screw that holds the, uh, the bearing in place, which is really cool. And then these also adjust. And then we got, we bought a shock here to test out. Now this is rated for 2000 pounds, which my dad thinks is overkill. <laughs> yes, I do. But I'd rather have something a little bit more stiff to try. And then we can kind of go down from there. Then we got our front forks. And then we also have our 3D printed 
swing arm right there. I did have to fill in a little bit of room right there, but ultimately I think it looks kind of cool. What do you think, Dad? Yeah, it does. And yeah. This, that's the front of it there for our adjustment for the shock. Yeah, right here. So you can basically put the shock in any one of these holes and you can change how tight or sorry, how stiff or how soft the actual ride is. Yeah. Let's see what that looks like. Just kind of let's prop it in place. And that slips right in there to that first hole. And this is how she'll sit. Yeah. It's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna take all those 3D printed parts, we're gonna assemble the bike, we're gonna put it together, and we're gonna see how everything works, and then we're gonna see what we need to refine, because ultimately, what looks good on a computer might not look good in real life, or might not actually work as intended. So here we go. So this is the bracket right here on how to stick the actual rear shock on. So as you can see, there's a little bit lip at the bottom there. And then we got these three holes right there for it to kind of fit into. So it just kind of sits in place like that. And then there's two bolts that go through at the top and bottom there. And then that's kind of what locks it in place. And the nice thing about this design is, so the middle little lip that I showed you, that kind of takes a lot of the force of the shock. And so that's just gonna go right into the frame itself or into the motor mount plate, which should absorb a lot of the pressure and the force. And then the two bolts are more just to kind of hold that bracket in place. So you shouldn't have to worry about the bolts breaking due to the force. I mean, that's the idea. Yeah, that's right. But that's kind of what it's looking like there. I think that looks pretty good. Again, it, you can't really test it, but. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the shock, that shock's too strong. Like, it's just the. Uh, it'll be interesting. Normal for me just to do that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Now, one thing too I really want to do is put our logo right there. I think that will look really good if we just throw our logo in right there. Okay. Let's do uh, maybe the front end now. So the way that we have it on the neck is the bearings just fit right into the neck right up here, just like that. And so it should be flush with the actual neck itself so that you don't have to worry about it protruding or being in the way. This is why 3D printing actually is amazing right now because we just put it together and there's a little bit of a gap at the top here, meaning that these can go up and down, which is not good. And I think what happened was in the design process, yes, everything was flush and good, but I forgot to account for the actual spacers that you wanna put between the bearing and the actual clamps themselves. And so those little spacers are causing this little bit of room here. So on the next version, we might have to make the neck a little bit smaller. Yeah, but once the, the machine shop gets to everything, everything will fit perfect. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah, but. Everything will fit perfect. Okay, but it's in there now. Does the stopper work? Look at that. Is it hitting it? Yep, right there. Perfect. And is there clearance at the top here? Yep, perfect. Lots of clearance. Lots of clearance, okay, good. Yeah, look at that, eh? So because this is 3D printed, we don't really have all the screws and stuff in the hardware. Yes, we use some screws at the bottom for these little handlebar sleeve adapters, but for the handlebars and stuff, we're just gonna put it in there. We're mocking it up just to see what it roughly looks like. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah, and then someone wants to turn them to feel more comfortable. They can rotate them. They'd be able to turn them like that if they wish. Or if they want to bring them in a little closer, they can do that also. And if they want to bring it down, they can bring it down. Do you think those are high enough though? Like those, that's not that high. No, I think we're going to have to go a little bit taller. Yeah, because I think these are right now, they might be eight or nine inches. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to have to go at least 12. Okay, so that's... 10 inches right there. So do 12 at the so top. So 12 over here. Okay, so just, cause then I could visually see Then it. you'll have to put, make the handlebars uh, 15 inches then. 15, okay. Yeah, but then. 15 to get 12 at the top there. Yeah, cause you want at least, I think, two inches of, of it being clipped. Yeah, yeah, of there. course, yeah. Okay, but let's see, slide it all the way down now. Let's just see what it looks like. Cause the nice thing about these bars, the idea would be that you can slide them down if you want to, you know, <laughs> if you're trying to transport this or if you're just, you want to have it smaller or say you want to race and maybe you want to be more downward. Well, not like that. Well, no, that's the transport. Well, yeah, if you want to transport it, you could. Yeah. And now your handlebars won't get in the way. <laughs> it's the first time handlebars are thinner than the actual bike itself. <laughs> They're not as wide, but then, I mean, yeah, if you were drag racing, you might want it lower like that. Yeah, that's true too. That's really cool.
look at this. It's a real little motorcycle. <laughs> I know, hey, look like, at Seeing it with wheels makes it real. Oh my God, yeah, that's gonna be cool. Putting it together, it was cool, but now like, I feel like we should put a motor in it. Yeah. We should see about putting a motor in it. Dad. Yeah. We got an email back from one of the machine shops. Oh, okay, hopefully it's good news, I hope. <laughs> he says, hey Sam, as you can imagine, I have about 1.6 million questions. He's like, I don't have a number for you handy, but let's jump on a call to discuss the overall concept of the project and what you were trying to accomplish. Okay, so guys, great news. We got an email from one of the machine shops finally that they think they can do it. They just want to jump on a call because they have a ton of questions, but hopefully that's a good thing. And hopefully that means they think they can do it. They just need to understand a little bit more. So I'm going to go send off an email and fingers crossed. Hit that like button. Wish us luck. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so it looks like we might have found the perfect partner to help us turn this dream into a reality. I just hope the design is actually possible because printing plastic is completely different than fabricating metal. So this is from a Honda Ruckus. Yeah. And for this style of bike, it's much thicker. I kind of like like that thicker road style tire on this for right now. Yeah, but the tires that we're getting, we're getting two different sizes. One's a little wider. Yeah, it's a little bit wider. So it might be something that's like in between this one and that one. And this but, one here, yeah. I mean, this doesn't look too bad in there either. No. But I think when I build mine, I might want to go with more of a thicker tire like that. Oh, we also have this really cool. Well, I don't think there's any mini bikes that have this. What we want to do is create a way to make sure that the motor is locked in place. So even if you're riding and there's a little bit of vibration, it will stay in place. So if you see right there, it's a little tab that's gonna be physically welded onto the bottom of the frame. And so this goes through it, and then let's actually just put it on. So that's a three eighths bolt. So as you can see, this now, because you have, you can loosen or tighten this, you that this. allows you to shift it, and then you can lock it in place like that, tighten up, and then now you know for sure your motor's not going to move uh, left and right. So this is literally going to be a lock to prevent the motor from moving left and right, which I think is really cool. Should we put a little one first or a big one first? Let's grab the Honda. Okay. Let's see what the Honda looks like in there. Let's get the real motor. So now, which I think what people will do is they will probably remove this air filter, obviously put their own custom exhaust on it. Yeah, air filter definitely would come off. Yeah. The gas tank, maybe. The one issue a lot of people run into is that you can't access the gas cap like this. Like if you actually look at this for a second, if you were to draw a straight line from here all the way off, you couldn't put this motor in a normal, in a normal mini bike because the gas cap would be, would be in the way. I guess it depends on how wide it is, but I think that this would touch the top of the gas cap or the gas tank. The sorry. gas tank, oh, for sure. 100%, but with this, a lot of people were wondering, well, why is such a big hump? And this is why, because you have so much more room. But also, one thing that we're gonna do for up here is, although yes, you have way more room now to basically mount virtually almost any motor in this bike, you can also get, we're gonna be designing a really cool custom gas tank that fits right in this area. It's probably gonna be a little bit more straight, but with rounded edges. It's gonna flare out at the back, so it kind of matches the shape of the frame. Yeah, it looks good. and. The motor is sitting good in the middle, so the motor doesn't sit more farther than one side than the other. Yeah, it's pretty centered, right? Yeah. So just, this is for reference, how big the Honda GX270 looks like in the frame. But again, if you really look at it, it's only coming up halfway if you were to remove this air filter, that exhaust, and that gas tank, and you put the gas tank that we're gonna make, you can fit something even much bigger than this for sure. I think we can go up to a, a, a 670. Um, v twin 670 i think that would be cool yeah <laughs> but i don't know because the, the it would probably go all the way up to the top well that you would have to do a lot of modifications exhaust air cleaner would have to come off because everything's so big yeah exactly but man this thing looks it literally looks like a little motorcycle yeah I know, like right? a, a motorcycle not not a <laughs> mini bike a motorcycle yeah which is really really cool it's nice the motor sits nice yeah, and I think the nice thing about, see how the motor, it's kind of hard to tell with all the stuff in front, but it doesn't, a lot of times you put a big motor like this, it sticks weight out. And so yeah. the issue with that is the weight distribution on the bike is not even, right? And so now the, the distribution of weight on this is pretty going to, it's going to be pretty even. Yeah, it might go a little bit that way, but it's not going to be nearly as much as you see on other bikes. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I like it. I just got an email from the shop. They said um, the frame's not going to work. What do you mean it's not going to work? This is what he said. Hey Sam, took a quick look at the frame. 
but it doesn't seem like it was designed around using an off-the-shelf tube bender. Unfortunately, the design would need custom tooling and machinery, and unless you're prepared for that expense and ready for high volume production, I'm not sure it's possible. No. At this moment, my heart sunk. All the time, money, and energy. And for what? Is it even possible anymore? Oh, no way. I don't believe that. I mean, I'm sure it's it's not too crazy. Maybe it, maybe I just need to ask him like to be more specific, but like maybe is it too tight? Well, it, it looks good. Everything like fits in there nice. Yeah, I know. This definitely caught us off guard. And now I'm worried our dream of building the MBK1 might never happen. But worse, I'm scared of letting my dad down. This project is a shared passion, not just a business. So hopefully we could still make it work. I hope that doesn't mean we have to redesign it from scratch. Oh my God, here's another half a year. Oh my gosh, okay. Well, he's not joking, right? So luckily the machine shop responded and they said that there's a couple things that they suggest we can do to make this design still work. So we don't have to redesign the entire bike from scratch, so that's good. So basically what they're saying is that there's a couple bends here that are just too tight. These bends are not far enough apart from each other. And then these bends right here, same thing. You need to have a minimum of 90 millimeters from one bend to the other. And so right now we're looking at a probably about, I think it's 60 here and maybe 70 there. And so we're just gonna have to make these bends a little taller, but if we do that, it might change the overall look of the bike. My worst fear is that I have to get rid of all these bends and we just go straight back like every other mini bike on the market. But fingers crossed, I could figure it out based on what they're saying here in this email. But hopefully we can keep it to be the same or close to the same so that we can actually make this work. But yeah, so these are the problem areas down here, here, and here, and maybe up there. I'm just gonna have to double check. But yeah, I gotta get to work on adjusting this so we can actually build this bike. So after an entire day and night of redesigns, I think I have something that's gonna work. And in fact, it might even be better than the original. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so I'm happy with it. It's it's yeah. one of those like happy accidents where like, you don't know until you do it, but now look at it, I think it's way better. Yeah, it's beautiful, I like that. Okay, cool, well let me just send him over these updated drawings and then now we can't share the updated design just yet and that's only because we want to confirm with the machine shop before sharing it publicly. So hit that like button to wish us luck and while we're waiting, click the link in the description and register for the exclusive VIP pre-sale that we'll be doing very soon. See, we're only going to be releasing 25 of these to start and so I would hate for you to miss out on your opportunity to own a piece of mini bike history. So click the link down below and then come back next week where we'll be sharing another update on the MBK1 journey. We'll see you then.